Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I'm John Levesque. I'm the director of community and evangelism here at DocuSign, and I am joined by Muhammad Ali. I'm going to fully let him introduce himself in just a second. But today, we are very excited because we are bringing you some brand new tech. And not only that, an exciting way and how to use it. Today, we're going to introduce you into document generation for Power Automate. And so Mo is the brains of the operation. He's going to actually show us how this all works. And so, Mo, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. First, go ahead, introduce yourself, give the folks a good way to connect with you, and then take it away, buddy. Thanks, John. Can I, everyone? Um, Mo here, Principal Solutions Architect at DocuSign. Very excited to talk about today's session. Um, you know, I've been waiting for this, this capability, and I'm really excited to, to go through it with you today. Um, feel free to connect with me. That's my LinkedIn QR code. Um, scan it, um, and that's where I'll share a lot of my blogs and videos and, and you know things that I do with John as well. So let me get started and get, and get cracking into it. Actually, before I do, just quickly, the last few sessions that I've run, I've said a dad joke um, here and there, and they come across as, as funny to me and, and, and to most people, but some people, they don't get it. They say it's not funny, and I think... That's really the point behind a dad joke. It's, it's lame, right? So That's right. what I thought I'd do is, is draw a, a line in the sand and explain what really makes what really makes a dad joke. So I'll, I'll, I'll ask you the question. I mean, what, what do you think um, makes a dad joke? Hmm. I don't know. What makes a dad joke? When it's a parent. <laughs> a dad there joke about dad jokes. I love it. <laughs> I snuck another That's one in awesome. there. There you go. What a lame awesome. joke for the day. So, All right. so I got one for you. Before we go in, hold on. My kids got me this dad joke collection, and there's one I absolutely love, and it cracks me up every time. So I'm going to give it to you most so you can share it with your kids and all of you out there. So here it is. Um, why do they call them seagulls? Why? Well, because if they flew over the bay, they'd have to call them bagels. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Yeah, just, like, it's so ridiculous, right? Oh, I love it. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't quit our day jobs, eh? What do you reckon? Yeah, no, probably not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me talk about why we have document generation and what problems is it solving, and then I'll jump into the actual solution. So I'm um, thinking about... Document generation, what is it? It's, it's providing and creating, you know, personalized pixel perfect documents, professional documents. Um, without that capability, it's a time consuming process. You might be in Word, you might have a Word template and you're formatting it to, to exactly how you want it before you send it out, you know, for approval, for signing, whatever it is that you want to do. That takes time. Um, formatting inconsistencies. So, you know, whether or not you're, you're, you know, creating the template yourself, you're using, you know, the eSign templates, which, which are great, um, but for the more complex kind of scenarios, um, you really do need document generation capability. So you might get some inconsistencies there. And what that leads to is a poor experience for the person creating them and sending them out and for the, uh, the signers, essentially, the, the recipients of those documents. Um, and, and that's really the problems that we're solving with our document generation today. Um, I'll take you through a demonstration. Um, yes, the example today is a remuneration review. Um, typically, this might happen you know, once a year, um, an annual remuneration, but, but that could happen at any time. Essentially, HR reviews, how much you get paid, do you want a promotion, are you entitled to bonuses? Um, and and this, is, this can happen you know, a one-on-one -on -one or in bulk, uh, but essentially, from a HR point of view, we have Mike, playing the role of, of our HR manager who wants more automation in that process. Um, that they have issues keeping track of who's signed, who's completed, how many have I generated, you know, all this kind of stuff. And Mike lives in Microsoft Teams. So really wants that process to be able to send them from Teams, get notified from Teams and, and archive it in, in the Microsoft ecosystem, essentially. So in SharePoint. Now, for a bit of fun today, I've got some. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's awesome. Um, our employees uh, work for a uh, Tally Pro Wrestling, so uh, they're um, the, the, they have big egos and they expect a lot, right? So, mm. so they want promotions, they want pay rises, they want the lot. Um, Rick Flair, 
um, really just wants a he wants a quick bonus. He's, he wants in and out and just to get his bonus and get out. Ted DiBiase is also known as the Million Dollar Man, so he wants a million. He wants dollars. it all. He wants it yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. And then Bret Hart is after the glory, so he wants a promotion. So he wants mm. a pay rise and a promotion. So they all want different things, but they all want a seamless process, and they all want it to be easy on their phones, digital, bang bang, you're done, and move along to your next wrestling match. So, so that's essentially it for today. Um, I'll show you how we can really automate this whole process um, end to end and make it an easy way for everybody involved. Well, I'm really excited to see some of my childhood heroes represented here. This is a, this makes it a much more exciting use case. <laughs> okay, so we're in Microsoft Teams and I'm playing the role of Mike from HR. I go to my chat area. Now what I'm gonna show you is something a little bit different today. Within chat, you can actually kick off a Power Automate flow, which is great, um, which means that that Power Automate flow will kick off a whole process um, to send out to all the staff. Now, now before I, I actually you know, run my, my little chat command thing, I'll show you in the background what it is that we're actually connecting to. So there is a SharePoint list, and we can see here there's these three employees. Each of them have, you know, th that's the new salary, 100, 150,000, and a million for, for Ted Tibiossi. Um, Brett Hart's getting a promotion. Um, Rick Flair is not getting a promotion, but just getting a, an incentive, a bonus. And essentially, they're all in an approved to send status. Now, we could add, you know, a new person in here very easily and just say, you know, this is Vince. McMahon, you know, even the CEO wants a pay rise, right? Yep. Yeah. Of, oh, of course, the CEO <laughs> wants a pay rise. You know, um, I want to point out too, while you're filling this out, uh, as we're using SharePoint here, the the data repository here really could be anything, whatever your system of record is. If it's CRM or ERP or or Salesforce or wherever your data lives, Dataverse, whatever they call it now, is it still Dataverse? I can't remember. They changed the name so many times. Okay. That's good, yeah. So even if it lives there, um, all these systems will work, operate essentially the same. Great point. Yeah, hundred percent. You can even do this from Excel, to be honest. But don't, yeah, um, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's versatile, is the point. So you could do it from from Dataverse, essentially. Yeah. Um, I've added a new item here, um, and what you'll notice here is that it's in a draft status. So this isn't ready to be sent out, but the rest of them are. Um, and that's that's what we'll we'll show you today, how we can send it out to the people who have been approved to send it out. And the document that's sent out will be, you know, one template sent out to all these people. So we're in chat. I can say, um, yeah, what are my commands in my Power Automate? Um, list my flows. So I'll run that and I'll see what's available to me to run from an automation point of view. And, and it doesn't have to be technical from that point of view. It can just be a, what task do I want to run today from a HR point of view? I have a generate and bulk send task for my remuneration re review. That's number one right there. So from here, I can just go run flow one. That's the first one there. Press enter. And what that's doing is that's actually kicking that off for me. So that, that runs the process um, in the background. It'll send it to all those different people. So if we you know, go here, basically it will send it out to each one of these three. So you can see the colors are changing as, as, as we're going through it. And the status is changing to sent um, automatically. Um, and then essentially all three of them will receive that notification. So, and Vince has not received this because it isn't a draft status. So, so three of them have received it. Um, they've all got different kind of um, wording and, ter and, and terminology within their, their contracts. And I'll show you that in a second now. So if we go into the first one being Bret Hart, which is there, he wants everything. So let's go to Bret Hart's email. That's the remuneration review. We've just received it now. I could be doing this on my phone or wherever. Click the email and you'll have a professionally generated document. Now, when we look at it, click agree and continue to the electronic terms. Um, you'll see here, you know, your fixed remuneration is this amount, your promotion is, is this amount, and your short-term incentive being your bonus is this amount as well. So 
it's all pulled that information directly from um, that SharePoint list and it's merged it into a professional document. Now, with the other examples where there isn't a promotion, you'll see when I look at Ric Flair, this section will be completely missing. So I'll sign this one off for now. Um, and I'll show you actually a mobile view of that. So if I you know, show a mobile view on, on my Chrome device, um, we'll see what's great about doc document generation is automatically it'll look great on your phone. So whether you're, you know, you're looking at it this way or that way, it doesn't really matter. I can just sign it. Um, and then you're off and running. So great for, for our wrestlers who are really busy and always traveling um, and executives obviously as well. I'm slightly surprised at how little a wrestler gets paid. You know, I expected Bret Hart to have a better salary. Maybe. <laughs> uh, that's his uh, retirement package. Retirement package, I think, yeah. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. And now we'll, we'll compare that to, to Ric Flair's one. So Ric Flair doesn't have a promotion. All he cares about is his bonus. Clicks the review document link. And what you're looking at here is essentially everything the same minus the promotion area. So you'll see it's just completely removed that section of the document. Um, again, we can go through and sign it and so forth, but we won't do that right now. We've just done that with, with Bret Hart. Um, but that's that's essentially that process there. I mean, one template, instead of having five or six templates, you know, one for promotions, one for pay rises and, and so forth. Now you have one template and you can run as much data as you want through it. So you could have a hundred, a thousand employees, doesn't really matter. Um, you know, you have a standardized process. And what you'll see here when I come back to the SharePoint list, Bret Hart signed, he's in green, the status is now completed. Um, we've, also, we've also got to complete it on date. So it's all tracked automatically really well for my HR team and, and for, you know, Mike from HR. And when he goes back into his chat, um, Mike will also be notified by a, a DocuSign e-signature card. And he's being told here that who has signed off on it. So Bret Hart has signed essentially. Um, so, so you can keep track on, on everything that's happening directly from teams as well. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so I've learned a couple of lessons here. One, this is this is highly extensible. And two, if you're going to be a wrestler, make sure that you're the million-dollar man because you want to get the, the most pay. <laughs> Wish I was the million-dollar man. I know, me too. All right, so to touch on um, how we create the template that goes into for document generation, I'll put a link at the bottom to, to more of a deep dive for, for document generation that I did earlier. But at a high level, you've got a Word document. Um, we've got a great template assistant add-in um, that allows you to, to kind of build out your, your merge tags on the right, uh, build out your business rules, um, and essentially, you know, add them into your document here. Um, so you merge the data in, and, and essentially that, that, that's all you need to do. Once you're happy with this, you upload it into um, DocuSign. So we go into our, our DocuSign screen and we can see here, this is my template. I've uploaded this in here. You'll see it says document generation there. And, and so it recognizes those merge tags, we call them. Add your, add your recipient in, so the employee. Um, if I click next, you'll see there's all, all that is in there, but it will automatically convert to the right document. So if we look at this a little bit further, you know, there's an if condition around the promotion. So it's gonna show or hide that section. Same thing with the bonus section. So it'll show and hide that accordingly. And then my tags for signings are automatically added in. So that's it, that, that's how you set up the template. Now the fun part, right? This is pr probably the part everyone's been waiting for. How does it work in Power Automate? Let's go to Power Automate and take a look at my remuneration examples. Um, this is the one here that we're essentially using. I've set this on a, a schedule. So normally this, this could run, you know, once a week uh, and, and check for, you know, all the ones that are ready to be sent out. Um, or it could, it could be triggered automatically off each individual SharePoint list item. So it's up to you how you design it and how you trigger it. Um, yeah. But that's just the way that I've designed it now. 
because I wanted um, more flexibility around that, just to show you a different example as well. Also, another little note here, um, if you want to run it from Teams, uh, you have to set it as a scheduled flow or an instant flow. Uh, you're not able to trigger on-demand automated flows from Teams, only scheduled or instant. And so if you'd like that ability, uh, that's another plus here, just setting it up one of those ways. Great point. Yes. So instant or, or schedule, and I've got it on a schedule now. I've got it on a, on a monthly recurrence. You can have it daily, you know, however you wanted it. Um, but essentially, that's the first step, the trigger. Now, from here, we're getting the items that we're working with. So in this example, we've got four items, um, you know, one, two, three, four. So it'll get, this example will get the four items and then go through it in a loop. Go through each item in a loop. Um, and essentially what we're doing here is we're saying, is the status equal to approved to send? So if you remember, that was the status I was looking for before we sent it out for signing. So that's done. If it is equal to that, then yes, we want to send out an envelope, generate a document, um, and then and then have that you know process automatically handled by DocuSign until it's signed, and then come back once it's done. So here's the four steps. That's it, really. Number one is create an envelope. So we're creating an envelope based on that, that template that we created. So if you, you remember here, I have a template called HR enumeration. That's essentially what we're, what we're using here. I've got a body and an email subject. I mean, that's just the recipient's name. And I've just grabbed that from the SharePoint list. Get the document info from the envelope. Now, why is this important? And why are we using the, the, the actual document name? Because we need, uh, the document generation is based on a per document process. So each document is linked with a unique ID. And we're essentially getting that ID here. It's a, it's a good, and we're, we're using this step to get the ID of that document. So that's that's the step there. And then this one, once we've gotten that unique ID, we place it into this document GUID field here. And then we add our merge fields. So if you remember, we had employee name. So if I go back to my um, my Word document, which is in the template now, if I go back up. There's employee name, there's salary, there's effective date, and so forth. That's all inside this one step here. Upload, update document generation for form fields for envelopes. So employee name, salary, effective date, and so forth. So I've just I've just merged all the data here in one step, which makes it really, really effective and efficient. If you need to add more merge fields, just click the add item and you can add even more as you're going along. That's that's literally all there is to merging the data in. Beautiful. So we've added those in, six of them. And then we, we essentially, um, you know, we send it off basically. So, so that's, that's it there. Um, once we've sent it off, I've just added an additional step here to update that, that existing item and change the status to sent and, and include the envelope ID. So that's just a way to track it inside the SharePoint list. Um, but that's that's essentially it for, for sending it out. There's there's not much more to it, um, which is great. And you can those four steps that I showed you, you can build it into any one of your processes that you might have. So you know, is it is it part of Microsoft Dynamics, for instance? Do you want to do document generation there? Um, you can use Power Automate for that. Is it a is it in the SharePoint document library um, or a SharePoint list, for instance? So it's up to you how you want to really implement that. I'm just showing you one example of, of how we can really help and speed up that process there. That's really it for this demonstration. Okay, um, nice. So this is, we've done a couple other videos together. Um, if you all have watched myself and Mo together in the past, there's uh, been something that we've used called anchor tags. Now, Mo, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, it, it seems like this is gonna just totally replace that. There's not going to be a whole lot of reason why you would still use the anchor tabs it would really you'd be using these merge fields instead right or are there use cases where you'd be using both 90 percent of the time you're going to be using merge fields now which is great it just removes all the anchor text that you need yeah the only time where you still need anchor text is is for the signing fields so you know if i look at these fields here 
because we're still placing fields onto there. So if I change the color here, you'll see there's sign, there's name, there's date. Got it. That's just around the signing area. Um, but the, the whole document itself, you have a lot more flexibility around where you want to put the data, what, what you want to show and hide, and so forth. That's fantastic. And I love how it's intelligent too, and it will hide or show based on that, you know, certain things being true for that field. I think that's just a game changer because like you said, set up one template, set up all of your items there. No need to consistently be adding or dropping or changing the template up to, to or, or having multiple copies of the same with added or removed items. Just definitely simplifies the whole process, which, you know, kudos to the team for, um, for thinking of these things and developing these things and, and continuing to expand on this ability. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I love it. I think this is this is really uh, game changing yeah, for a lot of people. And the simplicity around it, really. I mean, that's that's the biggest highlight for me. I also released a blog around this recently. So I'll, I'll put a link to that at the bottom as well. Um, and that, that will just give you a step by step into how to build out those, those core four steps that I was talking about. So hopefully that will help you as well. Awesome. All right. Well, you heard Mo. Go ahead and start checking the description. There's going to be some links down there for you to go ahead and dig deeper and get upskilled in this new tech. Uh, also, connect with Mo. He put his code out there. Reach out to him on LinkedIn. Connect with him. Ask him a question. Get to know him. He's a super friendly guy and always happy to help. And then always take a look at uh, our community and our university where we're constantly releasing information that's going to be updated regularly to help you get familiar and get better with these new items as well. But other than that, uh, the last thing I have for you to do is go ahead and just click that like button and make sure you're subscribed so that you're not missing any great content we're coming out with. But that's it from us. We will go ahead and see you in the next one. Thanks, Mo. See you later. See ya.